as you may already know, my name's Claire Baker and I'm a former clutterholic and borderline hoarder. I successfully cleared all my clutter in 11 rooms and areas of my home over 20 years ago without the need for an expensive home visit. And I've been helping other people around the world do exactly the same ever since so that they too can know what it's like to live a completely clutter-free life forever. With over 20 years of experience of working with clutterholics and hoarders, I know that there are some common char characteristics that we all share that help explain why we struggle with our clutter. So let me explain one of them to you now. So this is going to require some viewer participation. Now, if it is safe to do so, and only if it is safe to do so, close your eyes and point to your past your present and your future. Point to your past, your present and your future. Where did you point? You can open your eyes. Now it may seem a strange thing to do, but where you pointed to may help explain why you never seem to have time to do your clutter clearing and why you struggle to focus and finish your clutter clearing and indeed anything else. Most, but not all, clutterholics and hoarders will have pointed behind them for the past, in front of them for the future, and either to themselves or to the side of them for the present. And that's because most of us are what's called in time people when we struggle with our clutter. For most of us, time is like a piece of string laid out in a straight line on the floor. We're standing on that piece of string in the present with the past behind us and the future in front of us. The only problem is there are multiple versions of us standing on this piece of string one behind the other. There are younger versions of us behind us and older versions of us in front of us. It's as if we're in a queue with ourselves at different ages. And to see beyond us in the present to the future, we'd have to step outside of that queue and look ahead. To look at the past, we'd have to step out of that queue and look behind us. Now we can find out if we're an in-time person by seeing how many of the following descriptions apply to us. So an in-time person is impulsive and lives in the here and now. We're driven by feelings. We tend to experience strong emotions. We don't like and we avoid lists. We may write them and lose them. We don't like and we avoid deadlines. We hate accountability. We struggle to plan. We prefer to live in the moment and go with the flow. We tend to forget significant dates, have multiple things on the go at the same time, and we get easily distracted and bored. We don't usually finish things. We start and then give up. We're the human version of lastminute.com. We don't really have much idea of what the time is, and we're often late for appointments and struggle uh, to compare past events in our mind. How can we spot an in-time person? Well, we'll tend to struggle to estimate, guesstimate how long things are going to take to do. We usually have financial clutter because we don't look at our past spending or plan for the future expenses. Any of these characteristics sound familiar? We tend to say things like, put the past behind you. You'll look back on this and laugh. I can't think about that right now. I'll do it later. I can't afford help to clear my clutter. What's good about being an in-time person is it can actually help you with your clutter clearing because you're able to fully experience emotions and feelings in the moment. But the trick is not to get lost in those feelings and emotions of the moment. The downside of being an in-time person when we're trying to clear our clutter is that we get lost or overwhelmed by the memories, the emotions and the feelings. We resist planning ahead and making time for our clutter clearing. We certainly don't like having accountability to doing the doing and we struggle to focus and finish things. We also struggle to protect our clutter clearing time and we have a fear of forgetting the past that we can't see that's behind us if we let go of things. 
Now, it turns out not all people see the time the same way as us. Not all people are standing on their time string in a queue living in the here and now. So ask an event planner, a personal assistant, a lawyer, a project manager, uh, somebody like that who needs to be able to plan. Now, they'll probably point to the left in front of them for the past, directly in front of them for the present, and to the right in front of them for the future. Now, these people are what's called through time people. To them, time is like a wall chart, a wall planner in front of them. They can see the past, the present, and the future all at the same time because it's there in front of them. Now, how do you know if someone's a through time person? Well, they'll usually have a better sense of what time it is. They'll use and follow a diary or a weekly planner. They'll store memories in their brain in a way that they can see all of them at once, a bit like a collage. They're often dissociated from their memories or experiences, which means that they can remember facts. They don't necessarily remember uh, or feel the emotions of their memories. They can compare multiple memories and images in their mind at once. They're more able to focus, follow and finish things. And they're able to more easily protect their time boundaries to get things done. They're good at prioritizing tasks on their to-do list. They remember significant dates. They like lists and use them and will usually be on time because they allow extra time for the unexpected. They love to use organizers. They can sometimes have tunnel vision due to their ability to focus and finish, and they want to finish things now. You'll hear a through time person say things like, time is on my side. When I finish this, I'm going to do that. Let me check my diary and my schedule to see when I can do that. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'll do it on this date at this time. I'm going to save this much money each week so that I can afford to do my clutter clearing journey. Now, the through time characteristics can help us with our clutter clearing, such as creating a weekly planner and more importantly, following a weekly planner. In through time, people can separate emotions from logic and reason. They're more able to focus and finish tasks and they're able to protect their time boundaries when they're doing the doing with their clutter. The negatives of being a through time person and trying to clear your clutter is that they'll usually avoid or resist using rewards, telling themselves they'll wait until they've done it all to, to reward themselves. And they'll avoid or resist revisiting the past in detail because they don't want to face those uncomfortable feelings, emotions and memories. Now, you'll probably recognize yourself with some of the in time and some of the through time characteristics, and that's perfectly normal. We're rarely 100% one or the other. But there's usually one that is our dominant type. We can take more things for that particular type of time person. Now, people often say to me, why can I be a through time person for others or for work? but I can't do it for myself. Well, that's because your comfort zone is being an in-time person, but you're having to be a through-time person for others or maybe for a job. So I've worked with an awful lot of lawyers, judges, personal assistants, teachers uh, over the 20 plus years that I've been uh, helping people. Professions that require you to be very through-time, to be very organized and, and plan ahead. However, because it's not our natural comfort zone to be a through time person, we almost overcompensate in our personal lives by being even more in time when we get home, when we're behind closed doors, because we're making up for how much time we've spent being really uncomfortable in our professional lives or with other people. It's as if we've spent all day being suited and booted for work, but when we get home, rather than just getting into jeans and a T-shirt, we overcompensate by going straight for our pyjamas because <laughs> that's our comfort zone. Make sense? Now, if you live with others or you have unsupportive friends or family, try this exercise with them. Ask them to point to their past, their present and their future. You may discover that you're living with people who literally see time differently to you.
And that might help explain some of the frustrations and conflicts that you're experiencing with them, especially in relation to your clutter. It's probably because we have different concepts of time. They may be through time and you may be in time. Remember, neither in time or through time people are right or wrong. Both have qualities and, and characteristics that are helpful for our clutter clearing. And we both have qualities that are a hindrance to our clutter clearing. To succeed with our clutter clearing, we need to let go of a few of our default comfort zone in time characteristics and just embrace some of the through time characteristics that don't come naturally to us. You can clear your clutter fast or you can clear your clutter forever, but you can't clear your clutter forever fast. It's time to accept that what you've been doing hasn't been working and get the help that you need to succeed. Click on the link with this video to find out how I can help you successfully clear your clutter forever without the need for an expensive home visit.